Mm-hmm. Okay, and now closing the gray tank. Oh, beautiful. Freaking yeah! Both tanks work. Can I yep. tell you how amazing that is? So I'm under here today replacing my black tank sewer pull valve. It is a piece of garbage, tiny aluminum tube that has buckled. I think this plastic piece that was supposed to be attached to where it goes out is in theory supposed to prevent this, but it did not. Came The RV came to us like this, and so I had to cut back the chloroplast or chloroplast you can see the buckle there and where it goes into the black tank valve so right now I am in the process of cutting it you can see the cut there so that I can unscrew this from the valve and uh, fo hopefully find a kind of stiffer solution to solve this problem That is the state of that rod. I think part of the problem is going to be that it's not a straight shot to that valve. Here's the rod. I straightened it out. Looks like it's just about three feet long. It's a quarter inch male and female threads, quarter by 20 on both ends, so we've got to duplicate that length with something stiffer that can take female thread on this end and a male thread on this end. I didn't show the tapping on the other rods, so I'll do that here, but this one's aluminum. I'm going to try this for the gray tank valve because we have a little straighter shot. It's still super stiff relative to that tube that was in there before. So I don't think it'll be a problem. But uh, the first thing I need to do is bevel a 45 on the end of this. So I'm gonna use a file to do that. And then uh, go ahead and turn the threads. Got some cutting oil. Put this on the end just to move everything up a little bit for filing. I'm just using a hand file because it's not that much to do. But just want to put a, put a 45 degree bevel on there. That should be close enough. Got my die set here. This is a 3 8 inch die for the 3 8 inch rod. It says you're supposed to start it on the side with the lettering, which for this one, it's got this little guide that you can set the aperture in there to the diameter of your rod. And in theory, it's supposed to keep it level. At least that's what I understand from the directions I have heard that you're not supposed to use the hexagonal dies for actually cutting new threads, but this set says you can, so I am doing that. Got the straps in there. It seemed to work with the steel, everything went fine, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work with the aluminum. Tighten the die in there, and then. Once you get the thread started, you want to go like a turn and then back off a quarter turn to kind of let the chips come through these holes. I am not an expert in this. In fact, the steel rod was the first thing I ever put threads on, so I'm just going by what directions on the internet said. Um, and I can say for a fact that doing this thing horizontally as a pain as opposed to vertically but that's what I got 
geometrically to do here. So let's see, just trying to get it started. You can kind of tell once I get started. So consider that a start. And we rotate. Turn okay, a quarter rotate full turn a couple of quarter. You can kind of hear the chips breaking loose that way. And the steel rod had a hard time keeping the rod from rotating which was annoying. The aluminum is a lot softer, so it's a lot easier. Just back it away here. Probably not the cleanest threads on the planet, but let's see. Where is my let's see here. Oh, there we go. I think I got it in an angle, but we're not machining tools here, so I think we'll be all right. Probably should have put cutting oil on that, but it is aluminum, so I think it's probably not that big of a deal. The steel is a little less forgiving. All right. I need this bent in an S shape so that it is approximately an inch. So I'm going to move that in the place here. Oops. I still need to get this table locked up. This is highly Maybe a bit too much, but we'll try it. It is very satisfying. Quite satisfying. We got our needle threaded on here. We didn't have we didn't have another piece of thread rod, so we found a quarter inch U bolt and we're able to thread that. I might get a longer piece, but I want to finish today. So for right now, this will hold the handle on. That threads into the handle, the old handle, and then we'll thread into here, I think. Maybe we do this. I think this will bottom out first before the handle does. Let's... Whoa! Oh, crikey. Really? There. That bottoms out into the 
coupler. Put our little handle in here. Hoots. Shoot right on nicely. And there we go. There's our new gray tank valve. Now we just need to go for the valve. Gray tank valve handle. Oh. Now we need to go see if we can get it screwed on. All right, here's the gray tank valve. I learned that I took this coupling nut off and I actually thread the coupling nut onto the valve first. And then there's enough bind in the valve threads that when I turn the coupling nut, the valve stem just turns the way it's supposed to. And so I can thread this onto the aluminum. So, like the other one, we've got, it's hard to see, but there's a vertical bend to get to the right elevation. And then there's a horizontal compound bend to get to the right point where it comes out. And this is, again, much stiffer. This one's not steel, it's aluminum, so. If we have any troubles with it, that's bad on me. I'll replace it again, but now the next step is to just get all of this chloroplast back together. So I'm going to tape up and get the insulation to where it's in convenient locations and cleaned up. And then... My little plug things. Yeah, we've got our 3D modelers made the plugs so we need to go print those. I love living in the future. <laughs> and now we got two working poles. I mean, I assume they work, but unfortunately <laughs> the tank was full. Not, not full. It had stuff in it. So It's not something that we can test right now. I probably should have gone and dumped it and then done all this work, but you know, it can't be worse than it was before, so there you go. So, because this is a four season RV, we've got this insulation layer. So I'm going through and taping that up underneath the coral cross. And then um, once I get that taped up, I will go through and repair the coral plus. And the way I'm gonna do that, I think, is kind of stitch it together with zip ties um gonna poke holes in it run the zip ties through and then i'm gonna put gorilla tape over the top of it and hopefully that will hold it and then on the ends here i will reattach it with some self-tapping screws and hopefully that will do the trick so I got a couple that I fastened right near the end of my cut here. The rest of them, I'm kind of punching the hole and then fishing the zip tie through so I get it up to where, okay, yeah, it looks like that's where I want it. I punch a couple holes with the uh, utility knife, thread the zip tie through so that I can keep, you know, I've got like, plenty of flex so I'm not fighting with it the whole time and then when I got it all stitched down through I will at that point go through and get all the zip ties tightened up I'm putting them every six inches or so I don't this isn't my I mean the tape's gonna be on there doing the duty too but I just wanted something that was gonna kind of keep this thing up and give it a little structural strength so it wasn't just relying on the tape itself but then I don't want to rely on these holes and that pulling out so I'm hoping the belt and suspenders will work all right there are all the zippy ties set and ready and now I just will tighten them up and then apply some tape Along the line here, they had put these in with basically raw pin, like nails. 
So I got some, I took those raw pins out to get the chloroplast off. Chloroplast, chloroplast, who knows? And then I'm just replacing it with these number 12 self-tapping screws in the same holes. And I've got it, the start of it taped up. I went ahead and kind of cut out the little heads of the zip ties so that I could get everything smoothed down well. And then uh, I'll probably just go over it again for good measure. But I don't think it's going anywhere. Well. I got this side all taped up, put the tape down the middle, and cut out all the little zip tie areas, and then I put a strip of tape on each side to hold that piece of tape down, and then I put a piece of tape over the top of it. So, all I can say is if this rips off in transit, nobody can say I didn't try. My resident 3D modeler. Sharing in popcorn. Oldest child, numero uno, <laughs> is going to model this, a replacement part in Blender, improved. Not nearly as long. It'll be just about an inch, just to seal off the place in the trailer where this goes through the frame and uh, then we can screw it back on with some self-tapping screws and it will keep little rodents out and uh, so he's going to model that the rodents he's going to model that in blender and then i will 3d print it here is the piece we're gonna put through the frame we're using PLA right now, probably in the long run. I should reprint these in PETG. But for now, this will work. All right, we're gonna give it a shot. I put this backup valve on so I can open that just in case there's any issues with either tank. Um, I guess need the ability to close it right at the entrance. Uh, Hope you never need that, but it's there. So we're gonna try our two new valves, and this will be the first time we've used them in action. Mmm, sewer. Here it goes. Open this valve first, and then this is the black tank. If everything works, we should open this. And sewage should run freely, so let's pull very carefully. Oh, it's smooth. Alright, here's the real trick. Will it push back in? That was where we had problems before. I believe it has. Let's try opening it again, just to make sure. Yeah. Smooth open. Close. Woo! It worked! Now let's do the gray tank. This one's the aluminum rod. So, let's see. Apparently, we haven't been using much gray water. Okay, now closing the gray tank. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it's the little things in life. Thank you.